We've all heard the story of the Ankylosaurus, the tank from the late Cretaceous. Its defences were unmatched, but that was over 66 million years ago. For many of us, we thought that the legacy of armoured herbivores capable of stopping the most dangerous predators in their environments had ended. But what if I were to tell you that there is a species of animal alive right now which emulates this old legacy and it's found in Africa? Well, hello there, folks. Welcome back to Nature Explained. I'm your host, Jake, and in today's feature, we'll be going into the heart of Africa to learn about one of the most underrated animals, and it's called the giant pangolin, the walking, moving pinecone. The giant pangolin inhabits Africa, spreading across many countries. Most of its range is in Central Africa and also along the East African coast, but a small number of sightings have also been reported in Western Kenya as well as Cameroon. They're found mainly in the savannah, swamps, rainforests and just normal forests, inhabiting areas with a large termite population and easily available access to water. The giant pangolin is the largest species of pangolin and can weigh up to 32 kilograms, with males ranging between 137 and 180 centimeters long, whereas females are between 112.5 centimeters to 136.5. This is a classic example of sexual dimorphism. The tail of the giant pangolin accounts for half of this length. Giant pangolins have a reddish brown coloration. This is likely to help them camouflage into their environment. But what sets these extraordinary animals apart is a set of scales that goes up its back and body, granting them extraordinary defenses. I'll expand on this later. But what I should point out is that it's very good that they have those defenses because their top speed is immediately three miles per hour. But it seems to work because they can live for 20 years in captivity. Although, due to their lifestyle, we don't actually know how long they can live in the wild. One of the most prevalent features of the giant pangolin is its scales. We reach scale on average being between four to five inches long and is made from creatine, which is the same stuff rhino horns and our fingernails are made out of, which according to research, a single pangolin scale is harder than steel. The reason for this adaptation is purely defensive. When threatened, they will roll up into a ball, making them practically impenetrable to most predators. What makes this adaptation particularly fascinating is that pangolins as a group are the only species of mammal to have developed these scales, maybe because 20% of their weight is accounted for by them, resulting in low speeds. But that's not the only thing they have. Pangolins have also evolved a set of claws on the front arms, much like the giant anteater, but different because giant pangolins will walk on their hind legs alone without the aid of their front legs for support, with their tail ensuring that they stay balanced. Another similarity between the giant pangolin and the giant anteater is that the pangolin has a very long tongue, with its tongue being around 40 centimeters long, which is very useful because of their feeding habits. The downside of this adaptation is that, again, much like the giant anteater, they cannot move their mouths as much, relying on aiming their head to change direction when eating. They also have poor eyesight. Giant pangolins have large anal glands, which will allow the species to communicate. They also have evolved a powerful sense of smell, which is an excellent asset when searching for food, particularly when it's underground. They also, as a result of their small mouths, have no teeth and have had to adapt to swallow small stones and gravel to aid them in digestion. This is vital because the giant pangolin is an insectivore, which is a type of animal which primarily eats insects. The downside of having food basically everywhere is you need to eat a lot. Most of the giant pangolin's diet consists of termites and ants, making good use of their front claws to tear open termite mounds as well as digging underground looking for ant nests. While doing this, the giant pangolin will constrict their nostril and ears, ensuring that no insects can enter into their body. They will stick their long and sticky tongues in before flicking it back into their mouth, ensuring that some unlucky ants and termites or larvae will have been caught. Despite this, however, and the need to consume a lot, giant pangolins can be very picky and will sometimes, even after digging into a nest, leave it alone if it's not to their specific liking. With the giant pangolin, only eating around 19 species of both ant and termites. Some researchers estimate that the giant pangolin can eat up to 200,000 insects per day, which is over 70 million in a year, making them vital for controlling insect populations in Africa. Hey there, folks. Quick intermission from me. If you're enjoying today's feature, you know what to do. Hit that like and subscribe button. It really helps us out and shows that we're doing something right. I would also like to thank Ted Zeppelin, for suggesting this fascinating creature. If you want me to cover a specific animal, leave a comment below and also leave a comment of an ant to let me know that you've gotten this far into the video. Anyway, back to it as we start looking at some of the unique behaviors of the giant pangolin. Giant ground pangolins are primarily nocturnal, which means they're most active at night. But the result of this is that it has made studying them fairly difficult. So a lot of our information around pangolins is fairly iffy, but this is what we do know when going to sleep. They will either use or dig burrows of other animals, wrapping themselves into their ball, 
which grants them another use of their claws. Being ground bound, they will also flick their tongues in and out as a way to sense their environment. Another interesting fact is that unlike their cousins, giant pangolins do not climb trees. This is likely a side effect of their large size in comparison to the rest of their species. Giant pangolins are mainly silent animals with the only sounds they make being the rustling of their scales as well as when waking up and eating, they will snort and chuff with males on occasion making a soft hoot noise. They're also solitary animals only coming together for breeding. Again, this is another area where because of their nocturnal lifestyle and also where they live, our information on the breeding habits of the giant ground pangolin is fairly rudimentary. However, this is what we do know. We know they have a polygamous mating style, which means that the males will mate with different partners with breeding believed to occur sometime between September and October. They will only raise one child a year and the father will not interact with his offspring, leaving the female to raise it alone. Gestation is believed to last for around 140 days. When the mother gives, when the mother gives birth, it will be in a den and it will only be to one pango pup. Yes, that is what they're actually called. Pango pups are born with soft scales, which will harden after a couple of days, but they are born with open eyes and will be reliant on their mother clinging onto their mother's tail and back, much like the giant anteater. They will remain like this for the first four weeks, as initially pups cannot walk and will have to crawl to get around without their mother. But the positive of this is that for the first eight weeks, the pups will secrete a disgusting smell that will protect their mother from predators as they go on foraging trips together, as nobody wants to mess with an animal that smells like dead carcasses and stinky cabbage. Giant ground pangolins will reach the age of independence at four months old, by which point they should be able to rip open termite mounds and dig up ant nests. They will reach sexual maturity at around one to two years of age, at which point they will be independent from the mother and will go, they will enter into the African bush to start their mature lives. That is if they make it, because the predators of the giant pangolin are some of the most dangerous animals in Africa, primarily the African lion, leopards, and also hyenas which are where the scales come in handy, as when they feel threatened, they will form a ball, which makes them practically impenetrable, which is the reason behind the name, as pangolin means one who rolls up. However, despite this fascinating adaptation, it is unfortunately resulting in the downfall because pangolins are used in traditional medicine, both in Southeast Asia and Africa. To give you an idea of how bad this is, the pangolin as a species is the most poached animal in the world and will be sold by poachers for between 168 to 217 dollars at which point it will go to middlemen who will increase the price of their meat to somewhere between 1500 to 2500 dollars and that's just their meat the price of their scales can range from 600 dollars to 1000 dollars per kilo with the industry that has sprung up around the trafficking of pangolins being worth an estimated 1923 billion dollars which is the same if not more as the uk farming industry this isn't helped by the fact that 70% of Chinese citizens believe pangolins possess medical value, with the Chinese government allowing certain hospitals to use pangolin meat as a form of medical treatment. And it's not just in China. In Nigeria, pangolin flesh is thought to cure 42 conditions, from infertility to stomach ulcers, and also to remove bad luck or warding off evil forces. Africa, and by extension the giant ground pangolin, play a vital role in the supply, as between 2011 to 2015, nine shipments of pangolin body parts were intercepted in Asia that had originated in Nigeria. They contained 300,000 kilograms of pangolin meat and close to 5,500 kilograms of pangolin scales that were destined for both China and Laos. To make things worse, when you add both habitat loss and climate change into this, it puts giant ground pangolins into a vulnerable position especially when you learn that giant ground pangolins don't do well in captivity due to their specialized diet and have a way of becoming incredibly stressed around people with 70% of ground pangolins dying in the first year in captivity. But bluntly, if the giant ground pangolin goes extinct in the wild, that will probably be it for the species as there may not be enough individuals in captivity to ensure that there is a genetically unique population. But at the moment, they are considered endangered. But that doesn't mean there have been efforts for pangolin protection. As a result, pangolins are protected in some African nations. As a result of their secretive lifestyle, we don't know how many giant pangolins are left in the wild. But I'm sure we would all agree that the loss of this species would leave a serious hole and greatly damage the African ecosystem. 
And so they must be protected. Well, folks, that's it. The giant ground pangolin, the insect exterminator of Africa. If you enjoyed today's feature, hit that like and subscribe button and check out our last feature on the Siberian tiger. Once again, much thanks to Ted Zeppelin for suggesting this fascinating creature. Remember, stay healthy, drink water, and for the love of God, don't eat any pangolins. I'll see you in the next feature.